So I'm so happy to be here to be able to share uh, the, our research uh, today. And so thanks to Nanette for the introduction and, and just the opportunity uh, to publish this paper and this research. So you know, thrilled to have it. It's a, it was a joint effort. And I especially want to call out Kushar. Uh, you can see, see our, um, the co-authors all listed on this page, but this really was Kushar. He was really the leader behind this and, and many thanks to him for uh, having done this. Really interesting topic, it, advertising expenditures and the effect on consumer perceptions of quality. And it's interesting partly because of its importance in terms of the amount of money spent on advertising and on and the importance of quality in consumer decision making, you know, well documented, lots of research. And it turns out there's mixed findings on the effect of ad spend uh, and ad expenditures, the amount of money you spend and the perceptions of that on the perceptions of quality. Some research have found this to be have a positive signal, positive in, in, in terms of the relationship. And it's it's the signaling aspect that people infer certain properties if you're advertising. Um, a lot, you must believe in the product, there's credibility, there's a lot of reasons why that might happen, but not all the time in terms of the research. And the question is, what are the conditions, what are the factors that might explain why there are these differences in the, in the literature? So let's sort of do a, a theoretical and empirical examination of that. And that's what we did in our paper. So um, the basic notion of how this works, just to um, step back, is when there are fewer kind of direct, you know, quality cues and consumers, um, you know, available to consumers or, or when they're hard to obtain, when they just can't judge quality, they're gonna use other, they still wanna be able to make assessments. So they'll use other cues and they'll use what we call peripheral cues or quality cues. One of which is advertising expenditures for the reasons I sort of cited before. And this very much came out of um, you know, the, this accessibility diagnosticity framework in, in um, uh, consumer psychology, which is really well established. And it's a great framework. It's very helpful, makes sense. The more that comes to mind that's positive uh, as you make a judgment, the, the more likely that you will make a positive judgment and positive evaluation. So understanding the accessibility and diagnosticity of information like advertising um, expenditures is really kind of the key. And that's what we use that framework and that model and try to understand how it works in different settings. So the data that we have, um, and this was really the, the key to this project. So it's trying to understand, and, and there are lots of ways to look at this, but in a very macro view, monthly data set, 898 brands, so a lot of brands, 48 product categories in four years, monthly data, you know, data from Kantar, uh, data from YouGov, some primary data in terms of survey work that we did. So really combining a lot of inputs and trying to understand this relationship for these brands and these categories, this period of time, how much they spent and it, did it affect perceptions of quality as we found measured by surveys and then looking at a bunch of different background factors. So related to the brand, related to the category, you know, related more generally to the economy. Even. So I wanna walk through the findings and I think that will uh, illuminate uh, in terms of the relationship, some of those moderating factors. So here's what we found in terms of those factors leading to a stronger relationship when the ad expenditures, perceived ad expenditures uh, presumably by consumers, the actual expenditures, you know, that were outlaid, how they affected perceptions of quality. When was it more positive or stronger? So there's a stronger relationship for one, for brands that consumers owned or used in the past. And this was an interesting one because you can kind of argue both ways, but in this case, what it seems to be is that they're more attuned to the actual advertising, which makes sense. You pay attention to brands you know, and are familiar with and have used, and therefore have a, a sense of the expenditures and can use that as a proxy and a cue for you know, potentially for quality. When economic conditions are, are more favorable, when they're not as favorable, when they're tougher times, people are more likely to actually uh, 
go in a more direct route and try to understand quality in ways where things are better, then you're more likely maybe to just use a cue and not invest that energy and that uh, effort. And categories where consumers uh, are not highly involved. So again, when you're highly involved, you're going to be looking at and asking people, learning about brands in ways that when you're not as involved, where you might be using a proxy or, or a cue like this. Or when there are lots of new products and it's just hard to keep track. And the fact that a brand's advertising a lot is maybe a signal that that is a brand of some quality. And you use that as a cue too, because learning about that particular brand is just hard. So those are the factors and they're all kind of based on accessibility diagnosticity. Those conditions, those situations, when consumers aren't able to judge uh, um, uh, quality as much, don't or don't want to judge, choose quality as much, as much and, and use these different cues and the expenditures are, are accessible and seen as diagnostic in some sense. Now, there are a couple of factors that lead to um, an, a weaker relationship, not necessarily negative, but, but more neutral relationship. And one is high equity brands. And the main thing with high equity brands, people know them. I mean, they're well known. So the expenditures may not have as much impact or it just may be a ceiling effect. It's just harder to, you know, in terms of the actual ceiling for the quality to increase because it's already really high. And then the second is, you know, if there's a lot of volatility in the ad expenditures, you might not be able to actually assess it and recognize it as being high so that you actually see that relationship in your mind, understand that this brand's being advertised a lot likely to be of quality, credibility reasons, others. So if there's that volatile, you can't see that necessarily. So those are the ones we, we saw the um, weaker relationship. And, he, and we did see some moderators. It was kind of interesting. So we actually, the data set had, we summed across all these for ad expenditures, but we could also break it down by TV and outdoor, print, radio, and internet. The first two actually had stronger effects and part of it is there's not as much information content in them as there are in the second, which is print, radio, internet. So when there's that less information content and also just maybe the nature of TV and outdoor, those expenditures seem to, and the visibility of those maybe, seem to have a stronger effect on perceived quality. So the implications, um, I think, you know, stepping back, this is an area that's received a lot of research. This is one more study that I think takes a very macro view and really is helpful to just say, well, just if we just look at in a, in a macro sense and how much brands are spending and what perceptions of quality, do we see a relationship, a positive relationship, which we do, but more importantly, there are different um, moderating factors as part of that. But, there, the, but the start point is there is this signaling value that we're seeing or it can be interpreted as, you know, in terms of our data. And that can shape these quality perceptions in, in a favorable way. So that implication, that realization that is one of the benefits of, of ad expenditures, just that peripheral benefit, that signaling benefit that can be really important. That said, the caveat is don't throw your money down the drain. Understand those moderating factors. Realize that under some conditions, in, in circumstances, you're more likely to see this effect than in others. And I think that was, is part of the, um, uh, the value, I think, of the analysis that we did was to break it down with these moderating factors and understand what that relationship looked like, whether it was positive and whether, or whether it was uh, a weaker and not a strong relationship um, going forward. But that's the, the paper itself um, has a lot of detail that explains the data sets, explains the analysis, which was done very carefully. It had to be given all that was in there and the findings. So encourage everyone to take a look. And again, just uh, really, really happy to have a chance to, um, to share this and with my, our research team and my co-authors and, and look forward to the Q&A section of our session today. So thanks, uh, thanks very much.